Welcome everyone to the training module for the Nova Scotia Milkweed Monitoring Project brought to you by the Mersey Tobiotic Research Institute and funding provided by Environment and Climate Change Canada. This training module will cover everything needed to start monitoring monarchs in your community. First we shall cover the importance of this work, then jump into the materials needed to complete the monitoring as well as the types of data cards you may use followed by an in-depth look into some of the terms, finally wrapping up with the identification of milkweed and monarchs at different stages of life. Monarchs are currently listed as endangered in Nova Scotia, meaning they are at great risk of extinction from our province. This work is incredibly important for building our understanding of the monarch and their needs. Without information, it would be extremely difficult to help them effectively. This information will be used to better our understanding of what monarchs need so that we can aid recovery actions and hopefully increase monarch population numbers. For the monitoring project, you need only a few things. If you have a garden full of milkweed, the location is your house. We will provide you with the right data cards. Next, you need something to write with and to take photos with. Finally, you just need yourself and what you need to go look for monarchs. Some people may want a hand lens or magnifying glass to spot the small eggs. If you're heading out to monitor milkweed in the wild, make sure you have what you need for a full survey. Water, snacks, sunscreen, and maybe a GPS if you need it. You can decide what you need for the length of the survey you are doing. We have created two styles of data cards one for monitoring a patch within your yard and one for monitoring wild patches throughout the province. The gardener's edition assumes the patch features and uses street address as the location. We will cover each in detail over the next few pages. We will start with the gardener's edition and move into the wild patches version. The gardener's edition is a one page data card where you fill in one card for each patch of milkweed you have in your garden. We will discuss what a patch is later in the module. Let's go through the card. First off, tell us who is surveying so we can give you the credit for the effort you put in. Then let us know what date you are surveying on. This will let us know a lot of information. If it's early July, you may only see a few or no eggs versus late July, you may see caterpillars. The street address tells us where the milkweed is located. This can inform us of its distance to other milkweed, water, and other factors that might affect the presence of monarchs. Next, add in when you start the survey. We will also need to know when you finish the survey. This might indicate what time of day might be best to survey and also tells us the effort you put in so we can give you credit. Next, we will have the estimated size of the patch in meters square. This is a rough guess. You can estimate by guessing the length and width and multiplying those values. For reference, one meter is roughly the width of a door frame. Now, we see the estimated number of stems. This might be easier to do once you've finished the survey. This is the number of stems of milkweed, not individual plants. So each individual stem counts here. We will skip past the next block to go into depth in the next slide. During your surveys, if you don't find any live monarchs, but see evidence of them, you can record it here, just below the block, right here. This tells us that monarchs were there, but something may have predated them or they have pupated and left. In the protocol, there is a list of evidence you may find, including frass or chew marks. Bringing us to the threats, this includes anything that can pose a threat to the caterpillars or butterflies. There's a list of potential threats in the protocol, some examples being roads, construction, or predators. If possible, list the name of the predator, something like a wasp or a spider. You can record that right here. 
Next, let us know if you took any photos and make sure to send them in with the data sheet. You can put a Y or N here to let us know that you took, did or did not take photos. Finally, if you have any comments to add, please them write them here in the provided space. Now on to the species data. First, we'd like to know what species of milkweed is in the patch. List all the species that you find within the patch. Most likely species are to swamp or common milkweed. We'll do some identification later on. Next is the number of stems you surveyed. This, is, this will be all the stems you checked up to a total of 100 stems. You are welcome to do more than 100 stems, but it can be quite a lot. So you'll only have to do up to 100 stems within a patch. Next, the total number of individuals found on the plants or in the patch. Tell us the number of eggs, caterpillars, chrysalises, and the adults. If you can tell us the instar of caterpillar with the totals of each, that is great but okay if you're not sure. We will touch on these instars later with some photos for reference. Same with the sex of the adults. It can be really difficult to tell them from afar, so it's okay if you're not sure. Most important is just to record the numbers. Next we have herbivory and condition. Both of these have given categories to select from. You just need to circle which one fits best and we will cover these in a bit more detail with some photos for reference for each one. Herbivory is listed from zero to over 25% of the patch has been eaten, meaning that 0% is none of the patch has been chewed by caterpillars. Less than 5% means a small portion of the patch has been chewed. Five to 25, there's a bit more of the patch, up to about a quarter of the leaves have been chewed by caterpillars up to over 25%, meaning anything from one quarter up to 100% of the patch has been chewed or consumed by caterpillars. Condition has a bit different categories, starting from less than 5% up to 100% is either yellowing or dying. Later in the season, patches often turn yellow and die, meaning those will be up in the larger portion here of 81 to 100% of the patch is either yellowing or dying. This will tell us more about the condition of the patch and maybe the environment it's growing in. The other type of card available is the wild patches card. This one has multiple lines for saving several patches. This card looks a bit more complicated but just builds upon things we've already learned from the gardener's edition. Much of the data is the same, like who is surveying, the date, and start and end times. All this tells us the effort you put in. Some of the additional information relates to the location. Since most of these wild patches are not near houses, we need some other way to know the location of it. So to narrow it down a bit, we need the county and community, so we know roughly where the patch is. Community or site can be anything that tells us the area it could be a trail name, a brook name, or a community, something like Oak Hill. Milkweed has been poorly documented in Nova Scotia, so knowing where it is occurs is important. If you move to a new community, you can start a whole new data card. Now, in the Gardener's Edition, we can assume a lot about the features, but for the wild patches, we need a bit more information. So tell us about it. The asterisk next to each title are tied to a key located at the bottom of the page. For patch type, there are two options, G for garden and W for wild. Next is site access. Is this public land or public gardens or crown land? If you're not sure, you can use U for unsure. For site and habitat features, there are many choices. So pick whichever fits best. If you selected garden for patch type, you would select garden for this type as well. Now for boxes one through four, 
we will need a bit more detail to cover these, and there are multiple ways to get these values. For boxes 5 and 6, these are GPS specific. These are if you take a location or UTMs using a GPS unit. Number 7 is the estimate size of the patch in meters squared, just like the Gardener's Edition. Remember, a meter is roughly the width of a door frame. Once you've finished filling out all the boxes for this patch number 1, you can move to the second page where there is a corresponding line. On page 2, there are lines for patches corresponding to the first page. Here you record the total estimated number of stems, as well as the number of stems surveyed. Remember, you can stop surveying after 100 stems. You are welcome to do more, but it can be a lot to survey in large patches. Since we are using a subset of the patch to predict information about the whole patch, it is important to survey a representative area. So we suggest doing transect surveys, which we will show in the next slide. Next, we see similar values from the gardener's edition, herbivory, condition, number of individuals, evidence of monarchs if you don't find live individuals, threats and photo numbers or names so you know which photos belong to which line on the card. Both evidence and threats have some examples listed below. These are the same from the gardener's edition. You can use the letter indicated to save space. A transect survey is a straight line through a random point within the patch. This way you capture some plants within the interior of the patch and along the edge as well. While you walk along the line in the patch, it doesn't have to be a perfect line, survey any stems close to your trail. If you don't have a hundred once you've reached the other end of the patch, you can turn around and survey another transect parallel to the first to avoid surveying the same plants again. How to take a GPS point. There are a few ways to do this. The most accurate being a GPS unit, but these are quite expensive and not everyone has one. So you can use Google Maps on your phone to get latitude and longitude instead. To do this, you need to find your location Hold down on that location for a few seconds, a sm small box will pop up with the latitude and longitude. Another option is a fun app called Avenza. This can be very useful. There are several other apps that can be used to take a GPS point. All you have to do is go to wherever you find your applications and type in GPS app. For Avenza, once downloaded, you can use the base map. Select the arrow in the bottom left of the app to find your current location. Then select the pin next to it to mark this location. The add place mark will pop up and the location information in UTMs will show. Located right here. Sadly, accuracy is not given, but that's okay. Just make sure the location looks good to you. For some of the specific things, these are covered in the protocol. But if you're like me, visuals work best for learning. For this project, we have to define a patch to make things consistent. So for this, a patch is all the milkweed within 10 meters of each other. If milkweed is over 10 meters away, it belongs to a new patch. For reference, 10 meters is roughly the length of a school bus. Here are some examples of patches. The top two are separated patches, so you will need to do two lines, one for each one, and you will need a GPS point for each. If the patch is smaller than 10 meters long, you can take one central GPS point. If the patch extends past 10 meters, like the second patch demonstrated, you will need to take two points, one for the beginning of the patch and one at the end of the patch. This will tell us about how large the patch is, how much area it covers, and the density. Let's look at one more example. Here is another patch with many single plants in between larger patches or scattered single plants 
plants as long as they are less than 10 meters apart. You may end up walking past the last stem before you know it's the last one. Just return to it and take a GPS point at the end. Here are a few examples of some of the completed survey cards. We will include an example copy of each type of card within the protocol and materials given out at the end of the presentation. Here's an example of the wild patches card filled out. Here on line one was a garden site. The patch was small, only about four meters squared. So I only included one GPS point. This patch only had swamp milkweed. On line two was a large wild patch. This patch was approximately 60 meters squared. So I took two points, one for the beginning of the patch and one for the end of the patch. This patch was along a lake edge, the L corresponding down here, and was mostly, it was only contained common milkweed. Now on to page two. Now here on page two, under the estimated number of stems and survey stems, I have two numbers in each box. The first number is the number of stems I estimated within the patch. The second is the number of stems I've surveyed. This will often be 100. I have circle values under herbivory and condition. This patch was in good condition and lo had low herbivory. Threats included a nearby road, and I took three photos. For patch two, there was more herbivory, so the more the patch was chewed, you can see this by the five to 25%, but I found no monarchs within the patch. I did see frass and chews on the leaves and I took some photos indicated by this. I renamed the photo July 5th, patch two, so I knew which patch the photo belonged to. There was also an invasive plant nearby. To survey stems within a patch, gently turn over leaves and check for eggs and caterpillars. Sometimes eggs end up on the top of the leaves too, like shown in the left photo, but normally they will be on the bottoms. Usually you will be able to see the freshly chewed leaves indicating that a caterpillar is on the other side. Make sure to be gentle so not to disturb or injure any caterpillars as you su survey. My favorite method to survey is to gently grab some of the top leaves of the plant and gently pull it over to the side exposing the undersides. That way you can get a good view of the whole plant without having to turn over every individual leaf. Estimating herbivory is easier done at the end of the survey. The category includes zero, less than 5%, 5 to 25%, and over 25%. So if the majority of the patch has been consumed or eaten by insects, it would fall in the over 25% category. This would look something like the top right photo where the plants are mostly stripped of their leaves if some of the leaves, up to a quarter of the leaves, are eaten, this would be more like the 5 to 25% shown here in this photo. If there are only a few chews, but very few, as seen in the lower right photo, we would conclude that as less than 5%. And if there are no chews anywhere, or very, very few, you can conclude that as 0%. Now condition would be similar. The higher the percentage, the more yellowing or dead plants there are. The categories are slightly different. Late in the year, many of the plants will be yellowing or dead. If it's early in the year, poor quality plants might indicate poor soil. Here are a few examples with photos. Less than 5% meaning lush green leaves with no yellow or dying spots all the way up to 81 to 100%, meaning the leaves are mostly dead or dropped and the plants are discolored yellow or red.
there are two common species of milkweed in Nova Scotia, common milkweed and swamp milkweed. Common milkweed seen here on the left has large, broad, fuzzy leaves with pale pink flowers that appear in an almost a spherical shape. Next, swamp milkweed has more narrow, dark green leaves with pink or white flowers in a more umbrella shape. There are more varieties now available at nurseries, so just check the name or ask about it. It will be Asclepias incarnata is the scientific name for swamp milkweed. You may also come across tropical milkweed, sometimes called orange milkweed or orange butterfly weed. This has an orange flower, very narrow leaves. More species may be introduced, but we hope most people will stick to the native species that are swamp and common milkweed. Now let's jump into Monarch ID. Eggs are white cone shaped and after a few days the eggs will start to turn black, revealing the larvae inside. The larvae will emerge after four or five days and begin to chew the leaf. Young caterpillars will eat the eggshell then begin chewing a crescent shaped cut into the leaf. Now we'll move on to caterpillar instar identification. This is the toughest part of the identification. Instars are the stages of growth, and it's okay if you're not 100% crack, as long as you're kind of close. This just helps us prevent double counting if you resurvey the patch later. First instars are very small. They're the hardest to spot and they don't have stripes yet. You can see here, this guy is less than half a centimeter in length and this is a thumb for comparison of how small these caterpillars are. Second instars have gotten their stripes but have almost no antenna yet and are about the length of a pea. Third instars are starting to develop their antennae, they have clear striping and they're roughly the size of a small shirt button. Fourth instar caterpillars have very clear antennae and they're roughly the length of a strawberry. The final fifth star in caterpillars are very large, have very long antennae, and are roughly the length of a golf ball or larger. When ready to pupate, caterpillars may wander off to find suitable areas to stay. The caterpillars will hang in a J shape. The chrysalis will stay green for roughly two weeks until it will turn black. This black is the butterfly inside the chrysalis getting ready to emerge. You may find an empty chrysalis. This can be included as evidence in the section of the cards. Finally, telling the difference between male and female adult monarchs. Male monarchs have scent glands on their hind wings, shown here on the right photo. Females do not have these scent glands and the female's veins on their wings are slightly thicker than the male's. Often it's hard to tell if they land, unless they land and sit still for a second to get a good look. You can start your surveys anytime in July. Monarchs will begin to appear in early July, typically. You can conduct as many surveys as you like, but surveys in the same patch should be spaced three weeks apart to avoid double counting caterpillars. It's nice to survey when it's nice outside, but it doesn't have to be amazing weather. For your safety, it's probably best not to survey in the middle of the afternoon on very hot days. Leaves on the plants might be more wilty and harder to survey. Therefore, it's best to target early mornings or afternoons and evenings so that you have the best time surveying. Once you have finished your survey, you can take photos of the sheet or turn the electronic version to monarchs at mersytobiotic.ca email. You can also send them to the Mersey Tobiotic Research Institute Facebook page, or you may also mail or drop off physical sheets to our office in Kent. Everything you need for the surveys is contained within the folder survey materials, which will be distributed after the presentation. Here you can find a reference guide with photos, blank survey forms, example forms for 
and both monitoring protocols, one for the gardener's edition and one for the wild milkweed patches. If you have questions at any point, reach out to the monarchs at merseytobiotic.ca email and we appreciate all your help in this project and for monitoring monarchs in Nova Scotia.